right. So now a lot of people are mentioning this in chat. And we got a Tulsi Gabbard story. All right. And I guess we, we are going to have to address the Fox Business Article 2 to some extent. We want to let it build up more so we have a better idea of what exactly happened. Everyone wants to talk about it? Is that the yeah, thing? There, there are people we want to talk about, but this is the one story that we do need to bring up. Mm -hmm. um, Representative Tulsi Gabbard made an announcement that she is not going to run again for her congressional seat. And this is a shocker to a lot of people, but basically what she has stated on social media, on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and her other social media platforms that um, she is grateful for her time as being a congresswoman for her congressional district in Hawaii. Um, she's grateful for, for the, the amount of support she got from her voters, but she is going all in for her presidential race. Now, again, she's gaining a lot of momentum because of her recent uh, fight between herself and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, as well as on the fact that now recently, too, she had a meeting in with some Wall Street executives. And, well, there's, there's a lot to unpack here. And my perspective is that, OK, you're I'm I do believe and I'm a supporter of Representative Tulsi Gabbard. She's my second choice for running. But when you're going to give up your seat, it's also, I have to question the strategy behind it and the reasons why. Perhaps there's a little bit more into this. Uh, perhaps the story's going to develop further more into it. But um, it's really disheartening to really see her step away. Perhaps she has her own reasons to. But she just wanted to thank people for all her support. And then also following this, or, or sometime going before, she had a sit down or she had a meeting with some Wall Street execs. And to be clear, there was a tweet by Fred Wolf who did host that event who stated that he met with 15 other Democratic candidates that are running in that race or in, in for the Democratic nomination. Um, and that it wasn't a fundraiser thing, but apparently Scaramucci was somewhat associated with, the, with that event too. And the, the thing that I'm being reminded about, especially since it's coming from this Fox Business article is that Fox Business did a similar article six months ago and that thing was debunked and there's yeah so, so there, there's a lot to unpack here especially with her sitting uh, stepping away from her congressional seat and then this meeting too so i know we want to get into this but i think that just for our audience's sake we're really we're waiting internally here at hardlands to see what the yeah. wall street thing is about we just don't have enough information right now yeah. and it doesn't mix with what we would expect out of Tulsi. So we're basically going to cover it on Monday. Right now, we want to focus yeah. on her not getting reelected, which is, in and of itself, enormous news. Right, and and, and the thing is, is that she's been uh, in con uh, Congress now for like seven years, uh, wait, 10 years of right now, being a, a representative in, uh, in the state of Hawaii. And, you, you know, you, you look at her career, and, you know, she, she right now has a high-profile name after everything that happened the last week. I, I, I don't see the strategy behind leaving your congressional seat, but down that basically means that her challenger, um, uh, let me get his name correctly, uh, Kai Cayley, a, a Democratic state senator, uh, he, who basically thanked Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, since announcing her presidential candidacy in January 2019, Congresswoman Gabbard has worked hard visiting towns and cities across the United States. This dedication, while worthy of admiration, meant that her congressional district was often left without a voice in Washington, D.C. I wholly respect and appreciate the Congresswoman's decision not to seek re-election to the U.S. House of Representatives as she pursues the presidency. I thank her for her service, and I wish her and her family the best going forward. Okay, that's nice things to say, but at the same time, too, there are other people, especially you got Mayor Pete, Senator Bernie Sanders, Senator Elizabeth Warren, who are active in American politics, who are active in their own districts in their own way, you know, saying that, you know, they're leaving their, their district or area that they represent doesn't have a voice is sort of like signaling out represent Tulsi Gabbard for something that is a non-issue, I think. Well, um, with regard to the not running for re-election, yeah, uh, that's a powerful thing to do this time around because what, the, what she's talking about is this election cycle, right? Because she was elected to the House in 2013, yeah, six-year term, meaning that's this cycle. Saying, "Look, guys, I'm focusing on the presidential run. Like, hey, I'm already running for something. I'm going to try and run for both at the same time, and that's what we would expect out of a presidential candidate. Hey, if you want to be president, focus on the presidential campaign and being president. Don't hedge your bets. Like, that's a, that's a politically savvy thing to do." Um, the first time she held office was in the Hawaii City Council, or, or Hawaii State she House. She started yeah, yeah, very young. young. So right. at, at age 21. Right, 2001 21. to 2004. There was a gap after that. Um, she took office in 2011 again. Right. Uh, different, different thing, but then this particular 
uh, U.S. House seat was from 2013 until now. So, I you know this is a good thing, right? It, worst case scenario, she doesn't get the presidential nom. Uh, she takes two years, uh, does some other advocacy work in some form or another, and runs for some other seat in perhaps the House you, or Senate. Perhaps uh, in two U.S. Years, Senate or, in Hawaii or something like that. Maybe or prep for uh, uh, the but, next presidential. But, run. but there, but there, but there want, is something. I want to get into this real yeah, quick. Go ahead. So. That I think that the way I read her doing this is like Tulsi's someone who always acts in a way that she for personally perceives as the morally right. She she isn't a person that likes to or likes even perceiving in a way that's very political. So leaving the DNC when you were second in command to go uh, go by this unknown guy named Bernie Sanders, not a political move that one would ever make. Especially after being uh, threatened and getting that letter where they're saying, well, you know, you're, you're, well, you're, yeah, you're, you're going to get pushed back. Yeah. Well, the well, letter yeah. was after she stepped yeah, down, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. after she but stepped my, down. But my yeah. point is doing all, calling out Hillary Clinton directly and initiating a one-on-one -on -one with someone who still has a huge amount of power, not a political move to make. A lot of... On the last debate, directly calling out new, the news. Not a political move to make. Tulsi makes moves that she thinks. And literally going, uh, uh, serving in Indonesia uh, because that's when your time was to do it. That's not a political move. Many people would try and get out of that. Tulsi didn't. I think that Tulsi is still very young. I don't know about that. I think that's a good political move, right? That, uh, because you can, that's part of the optics. That's part of your political message. Yeah. It's a fine I, I suppose, but I mean, I could, I could. And there's, and, and there's a real quick correction, too. Because, uh, mind you, uh, we, we said that she was in the House for six years. Uh, granted, during those six years, uh, House term is like two years. So during those, so during that six year time frame, she was elected three times for the United States Congress. Is that right? Yeah. And Senate is six years. Okay. A one term, if you're if you're serving term, is, okay. is, is six years but in the Senate. Either way, that we're, get, we're, getting, we're yeah. getting off topic. We're, we're getting off topic. So <laughs> the, Tulsi making this choice, I could see her, people saying to her that, hey, Tulsi, you're not here for me. And I can see her going, well, I guess I shouldn't run for re-election. So I really, you know, we'll see. I, I very much hope she has some place to land because I think that of any of the candidates running, she has the strongest backbone. And hey, she, hey, she may hey. not... I, I, Sometimes I think she doesn't make quite the right decisions in terms of how she moves from spot to spot, or, but she is someone that genuinely arrives at a conclusion. She will genuinely evolve after genuinely changing her mind. She won't just do it for political expediency. And she is just attacked so relentlessly for so many things that she's not guilty of. I mean, again, yeah, you're I, talking I, about the ridiculousness of someone who's a decorated major being the person most called a Russian asset, most accused of treason. Yeah, so and hold on, because as, as, as a veteran, I you know served four years in the United States Marine Corps. The one thing I didn't like, especially, is like, okay, you're making an accusation that someone who served 16 years, much longer than I did, rose to the rank of major, and... You're making an accusation that she's a, a Russian asset. It's just you got to show some freaking evidence, especially if you're going to make such a bold statement, especially coming from Clinton. And see, the thing it's is, such Tulsi, what, thing. what Tulsi has done is given herself name recognition on a national level. And whether you are indifferent, you respect her and support her, you don't like her, it's just she, she's here. This is American politics, and it's having a soundbite, name recognition, and the ability to achieve victories in whatever form they are. And in social media in this day and age, it's like you have a one second, uh, one second window to really make your name out there. And Tulsi has taken advantage of that. And again, for me, she's still very young. She has decades to really figure out her policy. Like right now, I think she still has to move around on certain things. But again, like there's no one that has as forcefully and articulately put together a reasoning for, hey, let's stop being the American empire. We don't need to do regime change wars. The cost of these, again, people forget, she's in charge of the medics. So she saw every injury, every death from American soldiers, from civilians, and even enemies. Uh, and she saw that, and I can't imagine how that would change a person going there, enlisting in 2003. Yeah, she did two tours there. Thinking you're going to do be great and do this American thing, and then just every, day after day after day seeing dead, dying bodies. I can't imagine. 
anyone would with a, with a heart wouldn't kind of have that kind of a reaction then her realizing what many people are starting to that the reason that we are in these wars in the first place isn't for any of the reasons that were brought up it it was never because we thought there were WMDs it wasn't any of these things it was so that a few corporations, so Halliburton can make some money here, so construction companies get some money here, so that the military industrial complex can keep chugging along, uh, so that, and I, I still remember with uh, Christine Amanpour, that, that interview from like, wait, six or eight years ago when she's talking to Bashar al-Assad, and she goes, hey, you know, Americans are pushing their uh, regime change war. It's a matter of time before it comes your way. He's like, yeah, I know, it's, it's coming our way. And it's like, <laughs> people don't get like how... This is what America has become. It's 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 become an empire just like Britain. So, no, it's like the, it's the, empire, it's the yeah. strongest empire to ever exist in the U.S. It's the has the most power, the biggest military, and but it's an empire nonetheless. We just don't call it an yeah. empire. Just like again, like the Romans, what was their empire? Well, you just genocide an entire area and then you move on. What do the British do in their empire? You just. Uh, get your puppet, you make governor puppets and make people, what do Americans do? They just do a newer version. What's China's going to be the next one? What's China doing? They're not going through a military strategy. They're just buying out countries. Iraq has just signed a deal with China. So the, uh, Iraq, which we've put how much blood, sweat, and tears, money, trillions we of put, We put trillions lives, of dollars of treasury in there. Of that nature. And, they're, and they're like, okay, we're going to go with you, China. You have a much better deal. But yeah. just to, to sum up, um, to actually recap with other stories that we've been talking about, Tulsi is a 21st century candidate. And that's yeah. one of the reasons we like her. Yeah. Um, hey. Unlike Biden, who is a 20th century candidate. Yeah. yeah. And, and just a final note, too. I mean, obviously, she served in the United States Congress and she's making this decision and she has her entire support staff with her, her campaign staff, her volunteers and supporters uh, going along with it. And I guess if this is a decision that she feels comfortable with doing, then all the best to her. Um, obviously, she has yet to secure herself for the fifth Democratic debate stage. I'd be very curious to see w what that debate will look like if she's there and what will be said. And I do feel like her voice and presence should be seen because it's going to be after everything that's happened the past week, Representative Tulsi Gabbard not on the fifth Democratic debate stage. It, it's, it's fireworks. And let's face it, people like to be entertained. This is America we're talking about. And, you know, now the congressional district that Representative Tulsi Gabbard represented is now up for grabs. And and as it currently stands, uh, the challenger is the only one in the race right now. now so I want to add one final thing before this that I think everyone needs to take away, whether you like Tulsi or you don't like Tulsi. Tulsi, and this is very similar to Yang in, in this way, Tulsi has brought up ideas in the public that Bernie didn't bring up, that no one else has brought up, about war and peace and what is the goal of America. Her two biggest policy positions are on foreign policy and a Green New Deal, the two things that would go together to get America off oil so we don't need to go to war across the world for oil or uh, try to do a coup in Venezuela so we can get some oil. I very much hope that the ideas that Tulsi has brought to the table live on because I think if they do it will be much stronger than her even winning mm -hmm. presidency if she can get that seed like again when Sanders ran last time Medicare for all oh what a joke issue all the things we talked about oh raise the minimum wage what a joke oh so extreme so weird yeah. now everyone's using them so if we could get the Democratic Party in the next election to treat war and peace like Tulsi Gabbard does that yeah. would be wonderful and the thing is too we've been at we've been involved in this war on terror for for such a long time think about the amount of treasure we have lost the amount of lives that we have lost you know and you know the cost of war is high and now we're involved in how many wars now we're involved in the genocide in yemen iraq there, there's there's the crisis in libya syria it, it just it has to end and now there's all this talk about it fighting with iran so so lo looking at the bigger picture you know, it, 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 Representative Tulsi Gabbard has made an impact. Her congressional seat, is, she, as, as it now stands, she's stepping down. We have to. Have and to I know, but very story. quick. That's very, yeah. very quick, though. And I want to remind people, it's not like the U.S. is winning. China, has, we used to yeah. control 90% of Africa. Now it's 50%. Right. And even in the South America, China's winning with a strategy of economics. So it's like yeah. the strategy we're doing isn't yeah. even working. So, so, so at the end of the day, you know, this congressional seat is now done and now we have to you know it's it's like she's now all in for the presidential race so I'll be very curious to see how her campaign will evolve within the next couple of months because November 20th uh, is going to be the fifth Democratic debate 